I'm giving mother and daughter of Frankenstein. How's that for a happy family? Hi, Ugly. It's me, Pussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today we'll be reviewing episode two of RuPaul's Drag Race UK versus the world. Our queens were challenged to serve three looks in the RuPaul Ball. Kitty Girl, Butch Queen, and You Wear It Well. A look inspired by the legend and icon herself to be created using materials left in the workroom by the cast of the previous seasons of Drag Race UK. That was a joke. Are we laughing? Laugh, damn it. And since there's so much to dissect, we'll be ranking each queen's performance in the ball, as I saw it, from broadest rat to hottest hot, mathematically. I took the liberty of scoring the kitty girl and butch runways out of five, and the you wear well runway out of 10. Five points for would brew wear it, and five points for if I like it. We've got a lot to cover today, and I can't wait to get started. But first, are you ready for the big game? That's right. I'm talking about Raid Shadow Legends, the hottest RPG of all time in today's video sponsor. And just a heads up, you can use the QR code in the corner of this video to start downloading Raid right now and get a head start in the game. Here's the team. I've been playing Raid for several months now and what keeps me coming back are the sickeningly fierce champions. There's Sissy of Flame Tongue, for example, a legendary demon spawn champion who focuses on HP burn debuffs and has a passive ability that makes her stronger when anyone is on fire. And Roxum, of course, a legendary lizardman champion who can hit hard, throw up a veil, making him great against waves of enemies. But lately what I've been obsessed with in Raid are the PvP arena battles. Check this one out. One slobbering rush from Rough Stone and their champion bit the dust quicker than you could say yes god and tongue pop. And Raid's got a ton happening this month with a fresh rotation of the brutal Hydra boss and some special Valentine's Day events where you can get your hands on a brand new legendary champion. Oh, and pro tip, all new players that download Raid by clicking the link in the description of my video or scanning the QR code in the corner will get a free starter pack which includes Virgis, a high elf epic defense space champion, 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in the game. And get an ASAP because you can only claim your special reward for the next 30 days. And once you're there, you can find me under the name Fussy Queen. Thanks, Raid, for sponsoring today's video. Now, first up, you know, life's all about taking the good juju with the bad juju, and the bad juju, and the badder juju. There was a lot of bad juju on this runway tonight, girl. As Juju was coming down the runway in her first look, kitty girl, I was sitting there scratching my head thinking, what the hell is this? And I had to spend several minutes with it just to realize the bra piece had cat ears and that's how she was hitting the theme. And the thing is, the dress is cute. I would wear it. And Juju looks pretty. But as a fan of the show and Juju, I don't want to see Reddit to wear mall fashion on the main stage of RuPaul's Drag Race UK versus the world. Every other queen took this runway to a higher place tonight and Juju failed to even leave the litter box. This look is a rat. And then Juju's second look came down the runway for Butch Queen. She says her concept for this look is that masculinity can also be beautiful and delicate as she unzips that pleather jacket and reveals a bunch of flower petals on her bosom. And again, I was sitting there thinking, how does this look meet the runway category? Butch queen? Girl masculinity where? Because she's wearing shoulder pads and an updo? I don't think so. Where every other queen elevated this concept, GGP stayed on the ground floor. Butch please, this was a rat. And finally, for you wear it well. Now, I would never be mad at a drag queen for not knowing how to sew. After all, a hot glue gun has gotten many a queen very far in the design challenges. See, Mandela Cram. But when you are somebody that's competing for the fourth time on RuPaul's Drag Race, I think it's safe to say that you should expect a design challenge with some elements of sewing and outfit construction. But her end result here is just a little lazy. And I did use the word lazy because we have seen creative and fun looks, if simple and elegant, from Juju in previous design challenges. For example, I loved her watermelon look back on All Stars 5 and even her curtain couture look from season two. And again, she is doing this thing on the runway where she keeps opening up her dresses to reveal tights or pants. Panties? It just looks like, again, she's got an unfinished garment. And in a regular season of Drag Race, I would say something like this would be passable. After all, I would say maybe RuPaul would wear it if it were constructed correctly and elevated slightly and in a different color and in a different fabric and if the hair was three times as big. I was looking for a super bottle of the world, but didn't see one on the catwalk tonight. This look was a rat. 
And I don't mean what I'm about to say with any disrespect, but I left that episode genuinely wondering, does she want to be there? Is she bored? Is she there because she has to be? Or is she there because she wants to be? Like not one of those runways said, I'm competing on an international stage of RuPaul's Drag Race. And then I thought a little more about it. And let's play devil's advocate here. Let's suppose you were a drag queen who was a fan favorite invited back to compete in their fourth season of Drag Race. With, by the way, no grand prize and no weekly challenge win prize money. Would you invest anywhere from twenty to $50,000 in garments knowing that runways don't ultimately matter in the competition and are truly just fan service? All I'm trying to say is that Juju is already an established queen and all she truly needs to do is make RuPaul laugh. She's learned that. And having sickeningly, stunningly hot runways really aren't going to get anybody that far. They almost never matter when it comes down to final judging, except of course in challenges like these where I definitely think it would have behooved her to at least put a little bit of money into these looks. Because in this particular case, it kind of read as if she didn't care. Next up, everyone's favorite hole. No, not me this time. Jessie. Her first runway, Kitty Girl, gave exactly that. It's very kitty and very girly. This wasn't the most inventive take in this category, but she's got cat ears on, there's fur, there's a giant pink bow on this pussycat's bussycat, and most importantly, Cheryl's having fun on the runway. Like, sure, it would have been fun maybe to see some mascot paws or some more fur like on the calves of this look. But at the end of the day, I had fun with what she served us and hey, at least she gave us something a little bit more than mall fashion. This look is a very safe, for me. And for her butch queen look, watch out, her pussy's on fire. And Dana Burner is rolling over in her grave. <laughs> she said she was going for motorbike chick, but I was getting more Formula One. Either way, I got what she was throwing down. However, this look I don't think was butch enough. <laughs> Even though she's in what is essentially a pantsuit, she's giving very feminine energy. Cause I was like, Miss Girl, are we really supposed to believe that you're doing any kind of butch work or motor car related activities? I don't know what all that stuff is. In a full set? I don't think so. This look just needed a little dirt, a little grime, and maybe then it would have reached the finish line. <laughs> I cannot stop rhyming things since I wrote that cornbread poem last week. A cute look, yes, but for the brief, no. It's a rat for me, dog. And for her final look. <laughs> Miss Shezio, <laughs> what in gay hell is this? You can tell she tried though. There are elements in this look that you look at and you're like, oh, I do see the RuPaul inspiration behind those sad pieces of fabric there. Specifically, I think she nailed certain pieces like the bright colors, the leopard fabric, and that pink little floof on the shoulder. But the overall effect was like those ladies chain smoking at the slot machines in Vegas, not RuPaul. I was looking for suggestions on how to improve this look, but then I thought it would probably just be better to throw it in the trash and start over. Ding, 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 ding. This look is a jack rot. Next up, where's my chippy? Where is she? Back up, back up, back up. There she is. It's bag of chips. Firstly, I gotta say the bag of discourse online is wild. Some of y'all are out there acting like bag of personally came into your room and I didn't cut up your wigs. Chill out. Now let's get into her looks. Her kitty girl runway was actually one of my favorite in this category tonight. She's giving me Cheshire Cat, and I think it's a campy, fun adventure from her. And what she did here overall was great for TV. The colors are bright, and her performance was vivid. She was literally butt scooting across the runway like pets sometimes do when they've got stinky booties. But more importantly, she had a vision for this look and perfectly executed it. This look is as far as her second look, Butch Queen, <laughs> it certainly is giving that. What do I say about this look though? Do I like it? No, I don't. I hate it. But I do feel like it fits the category decently so. More so than the previous two Butch Queen looks that we've seen so far. But it's still not great. I do want to applaud her for really taking a risk here and coming out on the runway without a wig, which did add the masculinity factor to this look. That said, I was getting more Boy Scouts than Butch Queen. This look was a and finally, for bag is you wear it well look, let's talk about it. I think it was quite interesting how her dress appeared out of nowhere in the workroom the next day when everybody walked in and we saw Pangina feverishly working on it. I thought, surely there's gonna be some discourse about this on the main stage, but we saw none. Did Baga work on this dress at all? She said that she did, but there was apparently no video footage of her doing that. The truth though, I suppose, is between Baga and God and Pangina. 
but let's move on. Would RuPaul wear this? Maybe so. She's at least worn a version of this many times. Pink is one of her signature colors and a blonde updo is right up Ru's alley. And even though it's just okay, it 100% evokes Ru. And ultimately, that was what the girls were really challenged to do in this category. So I'm gonna leave this look at a soft hot. Next up, my favorite primary color, blue. Blue's kitty girl look I had a lot of fun with. She is giving fem cats of the future. I loved that she really approached this category with a full concept. The play of the tool and the fur and the little like retro futuristic silver lining pieces integrated throughout this look were really fun. Plus, and no surprise here, blue took us all the way with some feline makeup. One small change I would make here though is I would put much bigger ears on this just to help out with the proportionizing, but all things considered, I loved it and I think this look is hot. And in the next category, she gave us Barnum Bailey and blue. I love everything about this look. She gave us butch, she gave us queen, and she put the two together in a brilliant concept. This is a take on the classic strong man from a traveling circus, and she's got that big top skirt detail, and I love the way the black and white there plays with the different textures and fabrics of black and white through the rest of the look. The bitch even had a prop. Or maybe it was a real weight that she bent in half on the end of the runway. Guess we'll never know. Why don't you come around and lift me sometime? This look was hot. But as for Blue's final look in the You Wear It Well category, this, I think, was the reason she didn't end up on top tonight. And the reason she's so low in my personal rankings. Firstly, I have no idea why she chose this fabric because I don't think Rue would ever wear this color. When I think of Rue, I think highly saturated colors, multicolor, green, gold, pink, red, but not this mud brown color. Plus, I don't think it helped to pair this really muted color with a solid white hair. And and Rue does wear white hair from time to time, but she never wears it just falling messily down her back. But technically speaking, I think Blue constructed a nicely made garment. And she had the right idea, I think, to approach this with those asymmetrical sides to it. So credit where credit is due, but this look was not Mama Rue. <laughs> this look, meh. Rot for Rue, soft hot for Blue. Next up, Moon Prism Power! Mohart is giving us a Luna, the little cat from Sailor Moon fantasy in her first runway category. I'm loving it. And funnily enough, this is not Monique's first time to serve a cartoon cat character on the runway. You'll remember back in her All-Star season that she gave us a Puss in Boots fantasy. You know she brings you pussy to every ball. Why are you gagging so? Overall, I think this look was successful and I love the reference, but the fabric she chose to create the like pants and top out of got kind of lost on stage. I think this is a hard look to execute in all black on TV. You really just lose the detail. Had she though put some of that PVC she used to construct the breast piece down at the bottom as well, just to give a little bit of shine and contrast, I think it could have been elevated a bit further. But I'm a sucker for a black cat. This look is hot. And in the Butch Queen category, ah, ha, I'm acting. <laughs> I was so excited to see Mo do this. The Queens kind of had two different ways they could take this category, and most of them just kind of did a play on the words butch and queen, but Mo took us back to the roots of a ball and gave us butch queen realness. You see, balls were all about serving realness, which is kind of that intangible unclockability to a category. I think this look in particular really helped Mo stand out tonight because this was not only a great thing to bring to the RuPaul's Drag Race runway, but a great reference for Ru and Michelle. Mo Hart's lip gloss was popping. This look is hot. And for her final look, she's got a secret and it's that she's not RuPaul. Shh. I was dying at the picture of her on the Drag Race UK BBC Instagram where she's doing the little shush thing. Anyways, we hear some mixed critique on this look. Rue says that she likes the vision and maybe it could have gotten to a place where Rue would have worn the look, but ultimately as it was, no. I think her missteps in designing this dress were not letting the fabric hit the floor. And I was a little confused why she chose to do asymmetrical with the straps and the shoulder piece. I think actually had she kept the dress all that pretty green sparkly fabric and just done one shoulder strap with the little floof on the shoulder for an accent, it would have been like a hundred times better. This look was a rat. And next up, it's Panjana Hills. I am very off key, but who else has had her songs stuck in your head since last week's talent show. And who else has had this Sphinx look stuck in their head since they saw this runway? Oh, la, 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 la. 
Oh my god. Hello? The other girlies are just now doing it like Pangina. Her kitty girl look is a phenomenon. And let's just say what we need to say about it. This is one of the most beautiful, creative, weird, campy, and exciting looks that we've seen on Drag Race in a long time. From the way the fabric is rouged, to the mask that has the cat eyes, and the beading, and the jeweling, to the many, many rows of tatas that she's showcasing in this look, it is eye candy from head to toe. And everything is perfectly proportionized, and all the fabric is beige, and I'm that excited about this look. Wow. Hi, beige. I'm not kidding ya. This look is incredibly hot. But the hotter their looks, the harder they fall. <laughs> In the Butch Queen category, she was giving us a take on, I guess what is iconic to British culture, the Queen of England serving a hunting look. And I will admit, it was exciting and fun to see the first time that we saw it on RuPaul's Drag Race UK season one from the Vivian. But the second time, in pretty much the exact same interpretation, eh, kind of boring. Plus I didn't really understand how this was serving Butch Queen. Like I'm not getting raw masculinity from this. I'm just getting old lady going hunting. I don't know. And we are at the point where we've seen so many seasons of Drag Race that if we're going to see a look redone, I just want to see it done better or at least in that queen's own flavor and it's not a carbon copy. So this look for me was a rat. And finally in the You Wear It Well category, Bangina certainly did. But would RuPaul? The thing I love about this look she created on the runway tonight is the artistry of it all. She really took us all the way back in time to the 20s in Paris. Look at that spit curl, girl. The fascinator with the veil, beautiful, and the way she has bruised all that pink fabric with those blue feather details like perfectly placed onto it. Gorgina. But I do feel the way the judges felt about this dress, it was missing a bottom half, which of course <laughs> was on Baga's body. But what's there, as RuPaul says, is beautiful. I did still have the question though, would RuPaul wear this? I didn't look at this and immediately think RuPaul. And I think that was really kind of what kept her out of the top this week, in addition to only serving half of a dress. So all things considered, I think that Pangina flipped and flapped her way to a soft hat in this look. Next up, ask and you shall receive. Janie literally asked RuPaul for a win in the workroom this week and she gave it to her. And honestly, for what she did in the you wear it well category, I think she deserved it. But let's start with her kitty girl look. This look is, in a word, unfortunate. <laughs> Like, where do I even start? The positives I think here are that she did choose a theme and girl, she stuck to it, which is more than at least one other queen in this category did. She's giving us a little Egyptian pussycat fantasy. The fit of this outfit is bad. The nude illusion in this outfit is bad. And the flat hair and ear combo leaves a lot to be desired. It's just not, I think, draggy enough. It's got spirit though, spirit Halloween. <coughs> Blech. Sorry, furball. This look is a rat. Things do start to improve for Janie though in the second category, Butch Queen. She said she was going for Orange is the New Black meets Lady Gaga and Telephone and <laughs> I see what she's saying. But if we're gonna evoke the Queen's name like that, girl, I wanna see the full black and white striped fantasy that Lady Gaga served in the music video and nothing less. Unfortunately, this was a little less, but it wasn't a total miss. She is giving Queen and she is giving Butch. It's just missing a little something to make it pop or truly memorable. Like maybe a reveal to something fun and suggestive underneath could have been a really great way to elevate this a tad further. But for meeting the category here, I'm gonna give this look a soft and finally, the reason that she's at the top of my list and the reason she got the win tonight, this you wear it well look. It's incredible how, as Rue says, something so simple can look so elegant and beautiful. And more than that, what Janie is serving here is 100% evoking RuPaul for me. I get it in the asymmetric placement of the tool on her shoulder, and I get it in the color of the fabric and the glittery shine of it. It's very Rue, and it fits her like a damn glove. Janie looks gorgeous here, and I think she should be really proud of what she did in the design challenge. This look is hot. And as you can see from my scores here, it really was this final look that took Janie to the very top of my placements tonight. Because more than anything, yes, this is a ball and they are serving three looks, but we all know in Drag Race Hursery that the final one is the most important. Also, hey, Bussy King here for a quick interruption. We have a lot of fun here on Hot or Rot reviewing Drag Race and dissecting each queen's performance on the show. But I do want to remind you that there are real people behind all of that glamorous drag. Last week after Pangina's 
sent home Lemon, she tweeted out she was receiving racist remarks and death threats across her social media platforms and in her DMs. To which Lemon responded, by the way, it's never deep enough to send hate to my friend, y'all. I love Pan and she had to pick someone. And then Janie tweeted this after episode two aired. I just want to mention, I filmed two seasons of Drag Race within six months of each other. No worker tours in between and both in full lockdowns. I would like to see you try. I'm proud of myself, first and foremost, that's all. And I just want to echo the sentiment of these queens. Spread kindness and love when and where you can. And remember, there's never any need to be rude or hateful to these queens online and comment sections, DMs, or otherwise. Just throw a dollar at the queens who make you holler and move on. And finally at the top of my rankings tonight, welcome to Jimbo's Drag Race. I don't know if it's too early to say this, but <laughs> it might be too early to say it, I won't say it. But Jimbo is one of the most entertaining people to ever be on my television? On RuPaul's Drag Race? I, I, she is so damn funny. She makes good TV. Anyways, her kitty girl look. It's great. That sound like Tony the Tiger? Or should I say Tina the Tiger? But I think it just is that great. It's not necessarily memorable in a way that, for example, Pangina's was tonight. But overall, I think it was well done, cohesive. Plus the tiger stripes in orange, yellow, and red coloring were in this runway category, very unique. And I think Jimbo did a great job here. This look was hot. And I do love see, but what really did it tonight for me from Jimbo was this Butch Queen runway. Oh. My God, she is giving me all the Lady Gaga Born This Way album art cover tea that I ever needed. This is so campy, it's so fun. It is a perfect costume, a great reference, and so stupid, but fun. You just have to appreciate that when Jimbo comes down a runway, she is serving a complete look from head to toe. And not only is she having fun with it, but you are too as an audience member, every single time. And that's because she thinks about every nut and bolt of every look. This look still got steam coming off that exhaust pipe and it's hot. And finally, as for her You Wear It Well runway. Silence, bring back my RuPaul's. Was anyone else living, dying, and resurrected for Jimbo completely being a ham every time the camera was pointed at her? Like, I think she's one of the only people that could talk to RuPaul the way she talked to RuPaul and have RuPaul laugh and not just kick her out of the competition. Anyway, focusing on the look, what really did it for me here was the hair. It's so important, hair, that is, especially when you're doing a runway to evoke somebody. It's just one of the details that you have to get right. And more than just the hair, the dress that Jimbo made was perfect for Ru. It was gold, sparkly, very TV show host, right up RuPaul's alley. And specifically, I think she nailed it with the slit in the dress and that powerful leg sticking out on the runway. I was kind of gagged and Michelle looked at her and was like, yeah, a cheap version of RuPaul. Whatever though. I thought this look was 24 karat gold and I think it's hot. Which brings me to this week's lip sync. So Jimbo and Janie are the top two queens of the week. And as you can see from my rankings, those are also the top two queens that I would have chosen. But did I want to call either of them mother by the end of it all? I did react to this lip sync as well as the runways over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash buzzyqueen. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my YouTube videos, access to exclusive videos, and access to the Buzzy Queen Discord server. And you can join by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. But yeah. What really got me in this lip sync was the remix of RuPaul's song. It was very strange. But Janie did kill this lip sync in terms of choreo, and I think very much deserved the win. And her little outfit change that she did was perfect for this song, because all that fringe was great for her dancing. Jimbo, on the other hand, <laughs> was there. We love Jimbo, but uh, I think we found out that Jimbo indeed did not throw the lip sync last week. But it does make me nervous though, seeing Jimbo kind of not do so great in a lip sync because we're gonna be moving into a smaller cast of queens that are mostly all very funny. And these next few challenges, I'm guessing, if I were a betting woman, I would bet that they're going to be comedy challenges. And now that the judges have seen that Jimbo can't necessarily lip sync the best, it may cause them to think twice about putting Jimbo in the top, because at the end of the day, they really want to make the best TV that they possibly can. And Jimbo's going to be giving great TV as she's proven in many other ways, but I'm just saying, maybe they'll pick somebody else to put in the top instead of Jimbo, because they know they'll give a better lip sync. Just a thought, just my thoughts in my brain that I'm thinking. And as for my bottom two this week, 
Oh, wow. I was really shook that my placements came very much in line with how the judges lined everything up. I really tried to be non-biased and evaluate each runway on its own using a score system and then just double weighting that design challenge and I don't know, girl put me on the panel. I really think everything shook out exactly as it should have shaken out this week aside from, you know, Janie pulling Cheryl's lipstick instead of Juju's. That maybe is not the choice I would have made there. But let me know what you thought. Whose lipstick would you have pulled and who would you have placed in the top and bottom and what you think of my rankings. And my hottest hats in the kitty girl category was Pangina Heels. In the Butch Queen category, Jimbo. And for you word well, Jenny JK. I also asked my patrons what they thought and their hottest hots were Pangina Heels, Mo Heart, and Jimbo in each category respectively. I also want to say thanks to you for watching today's video. Today's video is sponsored Raid Shadow Legends who you can check out using the link in the description of this video and get a head start in the game. And my generous patrons who make my channel possible. I also want to give a special shout out to Home Squirrel, Lexx Wood, and Eden Beaton, who have all just joined my Patreon at the here and Paolo Rivera, Justin Guluarte, and Body by Steve, who've all just joined my Patreon at the hottest hot tier. And Aliao, Angel, Cyrus, Dicky, Felicia, Hector Simancas, JB, Jeffrey Steenberg, Josh, JP in Dallas, Laura, Asset, Matthew Burns, Matthew Bauer, Maxi Low, Wow, Miss F, Neely, Ryan Beats, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Steven, Tom Jaco, Tom Young, Tover, Triton, Wee, and Yijid, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye. You don't have to put the reference. People get it if they get it. And if they don't, it's fine. They're uneducated swine. Oh my god, I'm just speaking in riddles and rhyme. <gasps>